We're live at 11.05 or thereabouts, maybe a little bit late on BC. This is Fear Cars. We got Gary with us today. Pretty exciting. Aren't you excited to be on? Yeah. Yeah, Gary says, hey. So Gary's our awesome painter. Been working on Dorothy, been blocking, been blocking, been blocking, been blocking. We were hoping to have paint on it by now, right? Yes, sir. It always goes that way, right? Well, that takes a lot of patience. A lot of patience. We, I told Josh to title this one, There'll Be No Wine Before It's Time. Who was that? Was that Orson Welles way back that did a wine commercial? I'm not sure. That's a long time ago. I'm older than you are. But yeah, you I, it's a long time ago, but it's just got to be right. I mean, if it ain't right, it ain't right. So you're, you're on the final block and on the doors. The, the body's done. So I, I'm the blocking part. Are you... Surely you're not 220, you're 400, you're 600, what, what are you finishing? 400. 400. And why, why 400, why not 600? Well, 600, I don't believe paint will stick with the heat to 600 because you can buff it out. If you buff out a 600 scratch, I don't believe paint's gonna stick to it. It'll peel off I agree, the I think, I personally think 600 is too coarse, or too fine. Too fine, yeah. 400 is fine, but you're gonna seal it. Yes, sir. If you weren't going to seal it, I would wonder. If we're going to use this silver here. You can kind of see, you see in there how the colors, even though that's silver, you see the ripples in there. I mean, that's a, it's, that's a lot of metallic in that color. And what happens, that's flakes that will sit one direction or another, though. Some of the flakes will be this direction and some will be that way, and that's why you get the reflection off of it. So part of the deal is, if your sanding scratches are too deep, the way that the metallic is gonna sit in them scratches, you will actually see them scratches more emphasized in a metallic color than you would in a solid color. A solid color is just gonna be blue or black or white or <coughs> whatever color it is. But the silver, You've got the metallic, and you've got you've got two issues too on color match. If you're looking at the car, the face, everything is going to look one color, this and that. But if I paint this door off and I paint the body separate, potentially, if your pressure is different, if you sprayed this direction or went like this or didn't overlap the same or you just didn't do it exactly the same. The color could be different from this part of the panel to this one. And it could be different in two different ways. Your face could be one color, but then your flop. So if I'm looking at this thing from the side, that gives you a different dimension into the way you're looking into the paint. So I didn't mean to complicate it too much, but all that being said, we're gonna put it together. We're gonna paint the doors and the the basic car silver, but we're not going to paint it off. So we're just going to paint the inline from the body line down. That way we get a good match all the way around. And there's another thing on matching too. It all depends on your fogging. If you got a different thickness of your paint and it's not thin properly, the same when you go to fog one, you're going to get different metallic flakes to come up and stand so up. So you can you can float the metallic if you're doing a back in the old enamel days. Yeah. I mean, it's not so much like that anymore with clear coat, uh, base coat, clear coats, but the enamel days, that last coat, I mean, is you were worried about the color more than anything. The first couple of coats, you're worried more about getting it on good, getting a good coverage, and getting it, you know, an orange peel, getting it slick. But that last coat is almost like a fog coat yeah. to make sure your colors, especially on the <coughs> silver, it could, it could stack and you would have stripes. It, depending on how you spray it. So it's a pretty easy silver to spray. Nah, I've, I've done that color, but you can, you can do it. But it's a, it's a good looking color. Uh, hopefully Kendall's looking at this and if you got a big objection to that silver, let us know quickly because you paint this tomorrow? Yes, sir. Okay, so you, you'll be in Saturday. So we come in Monday and we'll see. Well, let, let's talk about windows just a little while. You're gonna get it all ready and you're gonna seal it, correct? So we're gonna have a sealer on there and they say you have a window. You can let that sit 24 hours. And if you let it set past that, you need to sand it again. 
but if you work it in the window, then you don't have to sand it again. So same with the silver. You'll put the base on there, we can mask it off, pull the, you know, then put the silver or the blue on, on top of that, unmask it, and then put the clear on. So you've got a, a certain window that you can still go on top of that silver. And if you stay at it, how you do that? Pretty much have to stay at it. And then, on the silver, if you blend, well, we're not blending, but in a sense there'll be a blend, because when you paint the silver, we're not, we don't want the top of it silver, we want that blue. And below this, too, there's going to be blue. If you kind of fog in and you don't have full coverage, that gives you an area of potential lifting when yeah. you go into it later on. So It also gives you a different base color for your blue if you're not careful what you do. And you'll be able to see the silver through the blue if you don't get a color blue. So this is, this is basically a, a base coat, clear coat. It's not a tri-coat. A lot of the colors we use will be a tri-coat where you put a base down and then the color on top of that is almost transparent. So you're looking through that color into your base color and then clear on top of all that. But it, we're going to go three coats of paint on top of silver. That's going to be one color. If you go two coats, it might be a little lighter. If you go four coats, it may be a little darker. Right. The, the color of the sealer that you put on makes a difference. There's such a thing as tintable sealers. And uh, don't freak out if you're the guy painting the car at your house for the first time. You can do it. I mean, this is just a lot of things you may, <laughs> you may pick up after doing it for years and years. So let's just finish with, why are you masking the inside of the car? Well, it's not really to keep the paint from getting on the inside because that, that's all the interior put in and it's covered. It's keep what's inside from getting on the paint. I was I was going to expect that was going to be your answer. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's I'm, almost a dust control. Yeah, I so, don't want nothing in there to come out on me, on my paint. So it, it's, it's a dust control. So the, the less dust you have, the better. I mean, if you get a few pieces of dust, I guess you can sand it out, but no runs, no drips, no errors, and dust is never a good yeah. thing. So water on the floor of the booth is always a good thing. A good booth is nice to have, but if you don't have that, I have seen awesome paint jobs done out in the driveway. So again, don't freak out. That's all on the prep. It's on how clean you clean it. It's all on the prep, exactly. And and not just the blocking, but the how clean your vehicle is before you start spraying. And uh, 400 because we like it to bite into something. So well, that's it. We have no paint for Dorothy, not today. So she blew me away when I seen the bottom, but she didn't blow me away today. We're just blocking, blocking, and no wine before it's time. So we will see you Monday and see what we have. Somebody up there, Bob.